All right. Well, I appreciate everyone showing up tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. I hope that uh, you all brought some questions because we have a lot of things that we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about low dose naltrexone for the, about the first 30 minutes. And um, if my one other guest shows up, we'll have a nice testimonial for you um, at the middle. And then Chris Jurist is here from MB Botanicals and he's going to share some CBD knowledge. So we have a nice balance for you here tonight on some alternative methods. So I am excited for you all to be here and I think it's going to be a really fun program. So tonight, the first thing we're going to lead off with is riding the wave of low-dose naltrexone. Has anybody heard of naltrexone? No? A couple people? Okay. So a little bit of background about, uh, about us first. So we are um, the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We have a pharmacy, well, we have five pharmacies, but we have one about a mile down the street here, a mile east of this. My father, sitting in the back, started the company 43 years ago, and um, we have kind of a challenging time here in healthcare. I think um, one of the things that's interesting is we have a lot of patients that come in the pharmacy looking for solutions that they're having trouble finding an answer to. Um, they might have a healthcare problem. Maybe you're suffering from some pain. Maybe you're, maybe you've been to four or five doctors and tried four or five drugs, and you're still no better, and you're frustrated because you feel like there must be something else. Um, we're, we're in a unique time now because I think that you as a patient, you guys are here because you must have something you're concerned about and you're looking for a solution. And I respect that. And you're probably paying for an insurance plan that you spend a lot of money for and trust, but maybe isn't helping you find that answer or your physician's struggling to help find you an answer. So it's important that you're empowered with knowledge and tools to help both educate yourself and the provider to find those solutions. So I'm hoping tonight we can share that with you. Um, a little bit about LDN, which is our lingo for low-dose naltrexone. Um, low dose nal or naltrexone itself is an FDA-approved drug. It's commercially available in a 50 milligram tablet. Um, it was synthesized by a scientist back in 1963, and it's been used for a number of different uh, reasons throughout history. Um, it's been used for addictions like heroin or narcotics. It's used been, it been used for alcoholism. Um, and I don't want that to scare you because there's a lot of medications that they use for off-label uses that weren't intended when they designed the medication. Um, you know, some of you may have taken a drug or heard of a drug called gabapentin or neurontin, and that's a perfect example. That medication was designed for seizures but more often than not, it's used to help people with neuropathy or nerve pain. So um, another example, if you want a little bit of humor tonight, another example is Viagra. That drug was not designed to help men with erectile dysfunction. It was actually designed for another blood pressure reason. So sometimes things have alternatives that you may not realize. Um, there's a lot of different medications that continue to use some form or some strength of naltrexone. Vivitrol is an injection that they often use in uh, institutions in, um, to help uh, inmates that have addiction issues. It's an injection of like 380 milligrams. Um, there's another commercial medication called Contrave, which is an interesting twist. It has a combination of eight milligrams of naltrexone, which is a little higher than the lower dose that we are talking about here tonight, but it also has um, what they call an SSRI, which is a type of um, medication that is used for depression generally. It's called, uh, the brand, one of the brand names you might recognize would be Wellbutrin, but in combination, it's used for weight loss. So naltrexone has a number of different possible reasons. And currently it's being studied as an orphan drug for autism. So there's a number of different ways this medication has been found to be useful. So the reason that I'm here tonight and you're here tonight hopefully is to learn about what's so great about low dose naltrexone. And instead of looking at the 50 to 200 milligram dose that is commonly used for this particular medication, Dr. Bihari was a Harvard trained physician who worked with chronic diseases um, and one of the things that he worked with was patients that had HIV or AIDS. And in the late 80s, there was an enormous, uh, enormous surge in patients that had this condition. And for whatever reason, he had some patients in a clinic he was treating for addiction, and they were using naltrexone. And what they found was 
is that patients that took naltrexone usually had really bad side effects of, of uh, sleeplessness and vivid dreams and some things like that, but they also had this huge increase in endorphins. And while it helped them control their craving for their, their addiction, it also helped with boosting their immune system by boosting their endorphin level. So the doctor had a hypothesis. If any of you have been to science class, the hypothesis, he thought, is there any way that I can look at my HIV patients who only have 20% of the normal endorphin levels and therefore their immune system is very low and isn't working properly? Is there a way I can take this naltrexone drug and maybe find a way to get the endorphin benefit without all the terrible side effects? So he just started playing around with doses and he found if he took 1% of the normal dose, dose, which was about six milligrams at the time, he found that his patients could still get the endorphin level boost and the benefits from the immune system boost without all the terrible side effects. So that kind of started the journey for low-dose naltrexone. And it was by his research working with other providers that we started to see some other big time medical industries do some studies. So we had, Penn State do the first landmark study for low-dose naltrexone on Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a condition that is in the gut. Um, it's generally very difficult to deal with. Um, so we, they showed some promise with that at Penn State. Um, Stanford Medical Center in 2009 did a great study on fibromyalgia. And it's been a really interesting journey for us as a pharmacy to see some of this research because really just 10 years ago, there were only a couple hundred articles on PubMed, and PubMed's kind of the Google for medical literature. But just last night, there's 1,400 articles. So there's a lot more research being done, a lot of study, a lot of people thinking out of the box for how can we use this particular product and maybe help people with problems that they're having trouble solving. So why does this product work? So based on Dr. Bihari's beginnings of figuring out that a low dose still gave you a nice endorphin boost, um, Dr. Chopra, who is now the head of Brown Medical School, uh, director of pain management, he wondered, well, why does this do this? I mean, why can you take this small amount of this one pill and it helps people? So he did a big study and researched this and found a couple things. Um, this, I, I'm going to try not to drown you in science tonight, I promise. But here's the, here's the science if you want to know the real science. So what he, dis what he found was is what this drug, naltrexone, does is block the opioid receptor. And when you block the opioid rece receptors in our body, that causes an increased production of endogenous opioids, which our word for that is endorphins. So that helps you, the endorphins are like the feel-good hormone, whether you, you know, it's generally associated with happier feelings, better night's rest, lower pain, things of that nature. It also blocks the toll-like receptor signaling. Toll-like receptors are receptors that are in your body that when they're tripped by some type of foreign inflammation or infection or outside influence, it causes inflammation and swelling. One of our body's defense mechanisms for our immune system is if, if you get an infection in your leg, your body has that inflammation because the goal is to close off that infection in that localized area so your immune system can fight it off. So by decreasing inflammation and the cytokine release, it lowers that overall modulation of the, the immune system. So you've got increasing endorphins, you've got blocking inflammation, and you also have some modulation of T and B lymphocytes. And these are two cells that are really important in your immune system and in the health of how it functions. So as far as experience goes, I was first exposed to low-dose naltrexone at a conference uh, for our pharmacy organization, uh, the Medicine Center down the street. Um, we have part of our team here, Janice and Brittany and Sonia, we compound custom medications for patients that don't have a commercial solution. So think of an um, a infant born premature with a heart condition. Think of a nine pound chihuahua, 
Um, big drug companies don't normally make medications for patients of this type because their doses are so customized they can't mass produce them. So we can make a custom dose based on a prescription order to help patients treat a number of different conditions. And I was at a conference with one of our organizations and I heard another pharmacy from Madison, Wisconsin talk about this. And they had a number of patients with fibromyalgia and other autoimmune diseases like um, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, um, irritable bowel syndrome, and they were all struggling with different solutions and they were trying to find a way to help treat their particular condition. And so that's where my journey got started. And now there's like a national and international conference where physicians go and gather and they discuss low-dose naltrexone and its possibilities. So it's exciting because in a conference like that, what we see is we see pharmacists and providers talking to patients, trying to find solutions and work together. Um, and it's exciting because in sharing their stories is I think part of the reason why there's so many more research articles that are out now. So I wanted to share some information here. There's a group of pharmacists I'm working with nationwide and together there are about a thousand patients that we surveyed and what we found is is that the average age of the patients that were taking low-dose naltrexone were 51 years old. They were mostly female. Um, they were using um, a traditional dosing protocol that ranged from uh, 0 0.5 to 1.5 to 4.5 milligrams, depending on their particular condition. And um, their side effect profile was pretty good. So 87% of the people reported no side effects. 12% had insomnia or sleep disturbances. Some had some vivid dreams, some had some headache, but generally those things resolved within the first week. So the neat thing about all this is, is all these patients were using this particular product, working with their physician to try to solve their solution. And when we asked them why their doctor ordered them their medication, these were all of the different conditions that their physicians were trying to treat. So this was kind of a collaboration of feedback from the patient. Um, so we saw everything from, there's erectile dysfunction again, ED, but there's, there was weight loss, there was Hashimoto's thyroiditis, there was fibromyalgia, depression, some digestive issues, a whole gamut of conditions that involve generally two things, low endorphin levels, and also inflammation of some type. Rheumatoid arthritis has a lot of full body inflammation. Crohn's disease, inflammation of the GI tract. Um, it's, so it's interesting to see how all these physicians were working to help patients in this area solve these problems. The most exciting thing is, is the patients reported themselves on average over a thousand people that 84% of them had positive outcomes doesn't mean it cured all their symptoms, but it helped them restore some level of their daily activities and daily life that they were trying to get back to that had been taken away from them. So in your binders, um, there are a number of different things there. Um, one of the things that are in there are a whole bunch of testimonials from patients. The goal with the testimonials are they range from all different types of disease states and conditions, and the goal is to hopefully if you have time to look at it when you're home over the weekend, maybe you'll find someone in there that you identify with. Maybe it's someone that has the same thing you have and you can build on their experience. Um, so it's a neat way to kind of look through and see what other people are struggling with and then to be able to look through and see some of the success stories too. So a lot of times when we talk to fibromyalgia patients at the pharmacy, you know, many patients tell us they've been to multiple doctors, they've tried multiple drugs, they haven't exactly gotten the results they're looking for. Um, it started at some chronic event back in time where they can remember, maybe it was a death in the family, maybe it was a car accident, maybe it was a really high stress incident, but they just lost some part of their quality of life. Um, so others before taking LDN, um, you know, there's one down here that I think particularly speaks to us, at least at the pharmacy, because we hear this a lot every day. I lived in chronic pain on a daily basis. I was no longer able to go to work, and at times I was on the couch for days of time due to pain, fatigue, and weakness. I was given several different medications to try to reduce the pain. They simply didn't work for me. 
I was up to 900 milligrams of gabapentin three times a day. If there's anybody taking gabapentin in here, you can identify with this poor patient. I can't imagine what her stomach and GI tract must have been like. She must have been miserable. I mean, it's, I mean that is a tremendous dose. Uh, and to not be getting benefit is even more frustrating. <clears throat> So her right palm was completely taken over by um, psoriasis um, to the point where she couldn't hold a pencil. So I have some pictures later for you that are a little graphic, but I think it will speak to you with respect to what she was suffering with. So there's a number of other things in here that you can look through at your leisure, um, but it, it goes across a number of different things. You know, people weren't sleeping well, waking up um, 18 to 20 periods of restlessness through the night. So this person was using it for restless leg syndrome, if anybody struggles with that. Um, so this is success stories after taking LDN. So this is our same patient that I mentioned just a few minutes ago with psoriasis. She claims it's 95% improved. She can flex her thumb, hold a pencil, and it isn't as noticed, it isn't noticed, as, mu it noticed as much by the public. Um, she's able to walk her children to school and has more energy and she was going to plan on attending college in the fall. Happily, since this testimony was given, she went back to college, graduated, and now has her job back. So I think there might be one of you that can identify with, I feel normal, I have my life back again. And I think many of us on different levels are trying to help patients find solutions to give them their life back or some quality back that they can't do now because of some type of pain they're in. So that's been exciting for us. Um, as a compounding pharmacy or as a pharmacy in general, we like to call this our triad. And what we do is our goal is to work hand in hand with you, the patient, the physician, and the pharmacist so that we can find a solution that meets your need. What we've really done with this is we've kind of added a little twist. And I've gotten a little bit of help from this group that I'm working with because we have a Yale trained PhD who is actually helping us filter through all this data so that we can try to help patients talk to their physicians and get more education out there so providers are aware what's possible. So really what we've tried to do then is put the patient in the middle of this triangle and we have the researcher and the pharmacist and the provider trying to help you solve these problems. Um, some of the providers that are commonly prescribing low-dose naltrexone, we've got integrative medicine physicians, functional medicine, naturopathic medicine, chronic pain, family practice, and mental health. What I really like to talk about generally is talking to your provider. You know, you, you, you have a relationship with your provider and you know, they know you and your situation. And you know, if you've tried everything for the standard of care, Low-dose naltrexone can be a low-risk way for you to try something with a low side effect profile that may have 80% or better benefit to your credit. So we're actively educating providers much as we're educating you here tonight. Um, next Thursday here, I've got a bunch, I've got, I invited a thousand providers in Northeast Ohio to come and listen to an advanced program that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, I've made over 150 visits to providers' offices in Stark and Tuscarawas County in the last four months. Um, we have a lot of physicians that are learning more. We have physicians that have learned enough that they're interested in it and some think they can't prescribe it. So if you take one thing away tonight, other than maybe being intrigued by low-dose naltrexone, your provider can write you a prescription for this. It does require a prescription. It doesn't require any special pain management physician. It doesn't require any special DEA number. Any medical doctor or nurse practitioner can write a prescription for this. And they still, we're still learning, helping them learn that it's a possibility. But there's a lot of different specialties that can be addressed. You know, whether it be rheumatology for patients with um, arthritis, uh, women's health, whether it be for thyroid issues or hormone balancing issues. Um, one of the things that's in your binder on the left hand side in the pocket is this four page flyer. Um, this flyer is in a number of doctor's offices in Canton right now because the physician tells me I get 12 minutes with my patient. I don't have time unfortunately to sit with them and explain for 30 minutes what low dose naltrexone is 
how it works, what it does, and the possible benefits. So they give, they give our flyer, which references the article from Penn State and Stanford and one from Dartmouth, all credible literature for your provider that they can look at, and it can also help you build your background of knowledge for, for why it works and how it works. Um, so that's one form of education. Also on the left-hand side of your binder, there is a prescription template that's divided by condition. Now, we currently, in that first research study I showed you with the patients of average age of 51, they were taking one particular dosing protocol. We're, we currently right now have some background data on 23 different dosing protocols across 15 different strengths. So this is just the most common things we see on this paper. So I've got on top, there is an, um, a list for a suggested protocol or dosing schedule for fibromyalgia or dermatology. In the middle are thyroid conditions like Hashimoto's. Um, there's mental health issues. Uh, one of the things we're finding is that hybrid dosing can be very helpful. And what that is, is sometimes the traditional protocol for low dose naltrexone has been to give it in the evening. Because when you take it in the evening, your body makes most of its endorphins overnight when you sleep. So if you can get to REM sleep, that's when your body does a lot of regenerating. And that's when a lot of your endorphins are made. But we're finding that even though that evening low dose naltrexone dose is helpful for patients with fibromyalgia or Hashimoto's, if they're having any type of anxiety or mental health condition, they can benefit from a dose in the morning also and keep that evening dose as well. So twice a day dosing can be beneficial. So if you or your provider tells you that they've tried low dose naltrexone in the past and it doesn't work, I would encourage you to re-examine what the dosing schedule strength and protocol was because it's possible given how individualized some of these protocols are, it may not have been the right dose for that right patient. Um, there's an excellent book on the table when you walked in that's available tonight for sale. Um, it's compiled by the, the LDN Research Trust. Uh, Linda Ellisgood, Elsa Good excuse me, is um, a patient out of the UK who had many problems that maybe share some that you have here tonight. She was frustrated with her particular situation and she got together with her physician and a bunch of patients in the UK and put together this book that talks about a number of different things. Um, in each chapter, there is a different disease state. There's a story about a patient, there's a story about their treatment protocol, and there's stories about their outcomes. And it's neat because they're able to put in a very easy way to understand in an easy reading way for you to identify with their situation. And if you've ever been concerned about talking to your doctor about some new piece of information, whether it be this or something you saw on TV or something you want to ask them about, there's even a chapter in this book to teach you how to talk to your doctor and what they would like to see to help you get your point across. So it's a neat angle for you to try to help bridge the gap in that 12 minutes that you get. So Linda's books usually go for 30 bucks. We sell them at our cost. Our cost is 15. If you're interested, they're on the back counter, but I would encourage you to consider checking that out. Chris, who you're gonna hear in a little bit, was actually on the LDN Trust radio program yesterday. So they have a number of different modalities for education. They try to provide education for patients and providers. They are the sponsor of that national conference that I showed in the first couple slides. They put that book out. They have a very good website with some exceptional literature on there. And in your binder, there's a link to her website. Um, they also have a nice app, so if you have a smartphone, um, it can help you track your progress with your dosing schedule. So it's kind of simplistic, but you'd be surprised how powerful it is because it can help, take, help you take a survey and document it each day with today's great, today's good, today is okay, today I feel terrible. So it doesn't sound like much, but as you're walking through a dose titration to find your right dose, it might help you target a dose so that you can look into where exactly you want to be. And we've had patients that have used the app that tell us, well, I felt great until I went to the next higher dose. And then I was like, I wasn't on anything at all. And they were able to identify when that dose change happened and go back to their previous dose. So I've got a number of slides here that I'm gonna kind of buzz through 
but I want you to see just by sheer volume of things up here, everything on these next couple slides, there are either clinical research studies that have been published, or there are case studies that have been published in the national literature that can be referenced for all these conditions. And currently up here, there's 169 different conditions. They are generally all autoimmune related. Um, so the ones that are gonna come in here in red are patients that have conditions that my group has specifically worked with. Um, but I think it's interesting to see how it spans across cardiology, ear, nose, and throat, endocrine diseases like Addison's disease or Cushing's, um, GI diseases, um, celiac disease, Crohn's disease, lupus, um, ulcerative colitis. I mean, it's a staggering list. And any of you who may be struggling with any one of these conditions, we can help you find literature to go talk to your doctor about it. Behind tab number three in your binder is by far the most valuable study for you, the patient, and your provider, in my opinion, because it's a study that was done out of Dartmouth Medical School, and it surveys the 900, it, at the time it was published, it surveyed 900 different research articles that were out on, in the community. And they picked the top 73, and they went through and basically pulled out the best parts of each study to make it accessible for your provider. You can appreciate, it'd be very difficult for any dedicated provider to read hundreds and hundreds of articles in an attempt to distill down the information. The goal with the binder is for you to have distilled information so that you have enough to reference to find a solution you may be looking for and to be able to take that binder to your doctor and say, doctor, look, here's a study by Stanford Medical School or Dartmouth Medical School. There's a chance that, I get, like, I've talked to gastrointestinal doctors in Canton. There's doctors that did these studies they know from going to conferences. So that can help build credibility for, for the research and for the solution. So I'm, there's, um, there's some cancer research we're gonna talk about here in a second. Um, lung cancer, leukemias, uh, neurological diseases. So again, all kinds of different conditions across a range of autoimmune or inflammatory diseases. fibromyalgia, lupus, Raynaud's, rheumatoid arthritis, sleep disorders. So Crohn's disease, this article, all these articles that are gonna flash up here are also in your binder. So um, Penn State did the first article on Crohn's disease. And the neat thing is, is they included, um, they included images from results. So, you know, you never wanna have, uh, you never wanna have a colonoscopy, but Here's somebody's colon and all their glory for you on the screen. Um, so this particular patient um, was refractory to all normal treatments on the left. And the, I can tell you that this is inflammation and swelling and is not what you want your colon to look like. But the colon on the right was after eight weeks of treatment on low-dose naltrexone therapy. Test results look pretty positive. Um, ulcerative colitis, terrible condition. Uh, patient on the left, again, refractory to all common treatment therapies, and on the right, uh, pictures after about 12 weeks of LDN. So that particular study out of Penn State is in your binder for your provider if that condition is of interest to you. Um, fibromyalgia out of Stanford. Um, this study is interesting because my picture disappeared. Um, this is interesting because when they did this study, they only picked one dose. They picked four and a half milligrams of low dose naltrexone. 30% of the patients with four and a half milligram dose um, actually talked or actually reported having positive benefits and a reduced side effect profile. But if you're thinking on your feet, back in the beginning, I said 84% of people had positive results. I think part of these people are in that 84%, but we can titrate dosing schedules to meet different patients' needs. And I think that we could see 50, 60, 70% of patients in this particular case study having better results if they had their dose dialed in. And that's something that we can help you and your provider do. 
Um, chronic pain. So chronic pain is also interesting. Um, there's an article here out of Stanford, and it talks about how low-dose naltrexone can reduce the symptom severity in conditions such as in fibromyalgia, Crohn's, multiple sclerosis, and complex regional pain syndrome. Complex regional pain syndrome is like the most awful type of neuropathy you can ever imagine. Um, it's a condition where even just the fabric of your shirt or pants is so intolerable that you cannot have anything touching it. So these patients are in such pain and looking for solutions. They're probably on narcotics or other medications to control these problems, but there, is, there are good studies to show that low-dose naltrexone can benefit those patients. Um, Dr. Chopra did a study on CRPS um, and found that his, in his evidence-based model, low-dose naltrexone should be considered as a treatment option. Uh, multiple sclerosis, there's data that shows LDN is well tolerated in patients with primary progressive multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> and that's what Linda had. And that's what Linda had? Yeah, that's what Linda had. Okay, I guess I failed to remember that Linda had MS. Okay. Um, pancreatic cancer. So this is bizarre. This is one of those things that I think providers look at and think this is too good to be true. So this study just documents three people. It's not a big study. In the medical world, they like to see tens of thousands of patients with all kinds of data. But what this study did follow were three different patients that were basically out of options. They had cancer that had metastasized to their liver. They'd either been through chemo or they did not have a solution that they were able to physically withstand chemo or surgery. So what the doctors did was they studied a combination of alpha lipoic acid intravenously and low-dose naltrexone orally. And this particular patient um, with these scans, I don't know how to read PET scans, okay? But what I do know is, is this documentation is showing in these images that the metastasized cancer to the liver is all but gone. And this patient, instead of living his three to six months like he was given, lived 78 months after being on this therapy. And the other three patients that are in this um, article have similar stories. So this is kind of like another one of those things where a Dr. Bahari type physician's going, why does this happen? So the good thing is, is there's more studies going on now to try to figure out, is LDN a solution for patients with cancer? I don't know, but maybe we'll have more data soon and more anecdotal inf information. So dermatology. We told you the story about the nice lady that lost her job because she couldn't hold a pencil. Um, there's a picture in your binder that probably <coughs> does this more justice, but you can appreciate it looks painful and uncomfortable and, you know, I don't know how you wash your hands or your grip a pencil either when you look like this, cracked, bleeding. So she went and talked to her dermatologist. They tried everything. She'd been to the Mayo Clinic. <coughs> And um, unfortunately, she still had that problem and she lost her job, she was a secretary. Um, so through her digging and learning, she got a hold of the Lotus, or the LDN Research Trust book and started looking around town and she was in Wisconsin and she had a physician who was more of an integrative uh, therapy type physician and he was a Harvard trained doc and she went to him and said, hey, can we try this? And he's like, well, I've never heard of it before, but I know that doctor because he's at the conferences I go to. So they tried the therapy. So after eight weeks on LDN, that's what her hand looks like. So I can't promise you that if you have psoriasis, your hand or your arm is gonna look like this in eight weeks. But what I'm telling you is, is low-dose naltrexone has a lot of benefits. We know that it helps increase endorphin levels. We know that it helps block inflammation. We know that it's low side effect profile. Um, you know, vivid dreams for a week or maybe some sleep disturbances. The other bonus is it's cheap. The average therapy is less than 45 bucks a month, even if your insurance doesn't cover it. And you may want to know, you might want to know why you're here tonight. I mean, why'd you have to come here on a Thursday night to hear about low dose naltrexone or CBD for that matter? But it's probably because the drug's off patent. It was synthesized 
50 years ago, so no drug company can run million dollar studies and then put the drug out and charge a lot of money for it. So they're not having drug reps go out and educate your provider. And the other thing is, is unfortunately, when we have new information that comes to market like this, you know, the, that influx in research I showed you has happened like over the last 10 years. Believe it or not, in the medical field, it almost takes 17 years for something to become the standard of care. So if you think about MRIs and CAT scans and all that stuff, that stuff wasn't accepted overnight. It took decades. And unfortunately, things like this that are low risk and low cost are not being well adopted by some providers because they just don't have the time to learn about them and they haven't either come to a seminar or let me pass the gatekeeper at their doctor's office or they haven't been to a convention where they can learn about it. So our, <coughs> mis our mission is to try to help share information like this for the benefit of patients and providers. It is low risk, it's low cost, and now we have other conditions that are coming up like other psych psychiatric or mental health conditions um, even to the point where um, the Army and the NFL and there are other widely, widely spread organizations that are looking at this for PTSD, they're looking at it for, I mean, we know about the addiction potential, but depression and anxiety and psychosis, there's a lot of different things that since the mechanism works the way it does, I think providers are starting to think, well, if it works for this, why can't we try it for that? And if it fails, it fails. And if it works, you're a hero. So um, there's a group out of Harvard that just published an article a couple years ago that has some incredible information on mental health. And their study didn't focus on LDN as a replacement for mental health therapy. Their study focused on LDN in addition to if you were taking a Zoloft or a Prozac or a Cymbalta or a medication like that to help you with your depression, they found that patients that took both together did better than if they took the depression medication alone. So it's interesting to see what's changing. Um, so basically, the goal tonight was hopefully to share a little bit without overwhelming you on what LDN is, where it came from, how it works, what the potential could be, in your binder, there is basically all the information that you could ever hope to have with respect to reading science. So if you can't sleep tonight, you know, you could break out one of those articles and you could read through some of the scary numbers and stuff and it'll help you fall asleep faster. But I think it could really speak to your doctor if there's a study in there that is for a condition that you have that you're struggling with. If I don't have a study in your binder, I would suggest you show your provider that one behind tab three with the Dartmouth article. That article is exceptional. Um, and if you have something else that you want to drill down on, we can talk about that um, and see if we can help you meet your need. Um, next month, we're going to change our venue. Um, this is actually our third seminar in the series. Um, and each month, there seems to be new information that comes out, so I try to change it a little bit each month. Um, I've had some patients that are frustrated with me that live in Canton, and they find it a burden, especially on a night like tonight, I guess, to come to New Philly. So we're going to do the next two up in the Canton area at the Hampton Inn at Belden Village. There's an invite in your binder. I encourage you, if you're interested, there's more on the table you can take. Um, but it's something that I think is exciting because we have a lot of opportunity to learn from each other. And I think as pharmacists, we'll agree that we as learn as much from you, the patient, as we do from the providers and the research. And it helps when we can bring it all together to help people with the same type of problems. So right now in our community, you know, we, we have some physicians that are very open-minded. Um, there was a physician who was supposed to be here tonight, but he gave me this excuse that he had two babies to deliver because they're, they're in labor. Um, so, but you know, one of the neat things is, is, there, is there are providers that are looking to think out of the box for you. And I mentioned at the beginning, you need to make sure that your provider is doing what they can to expand their knowledge. So there are providers in the area. Um, Dr. Chirac has been a real asset for us at our pharmacy. He not only is a trained OBGYN, I like him a lot because he delivered my son 18 years ago, but he also has expanded his knowledge base. He has looked into men's and women's hormone replacement therapy. 
He is looking at LDN for patients with fibromyalgia and other types of nerve pain. And he is also using CBD in his practice for his patients that have needs that can be met by that. We don't have too many providers in our community that are unfortunately able to expand their scope. You know, our insurance plans are, are locked in with preferred networks and non-preferred networks and prior authorizations and rejections and all this crazy stuff. So don't be afraid to question your provider. You know, you know I don't think they, uh, they want to help you. Sometimes they are just stuck in a system where they don't have time. And I think that maybe some of the info in your binder might help them find a little bit of time. So, and to wrap up, the interesting thing is, is that LDN doesn't stop with humans. Um, LDN can be used in pets too. And actually in North Carolina, there's a study right now where they're using um, LDN to treat tumors in dogs. So again, same concept, um, immune system modulation, increasing endorphins, um, it's kind of interesting. So we all seem to have similar systems with regard to to how things work. So our little furry feathered friends are not alone.